Welcome to Your Infinite Health. Are you getting older? Are you feeling it? How would you like to do that in reverse? We're your host, Dr. Tripp, and Lene. We've run an integrative medicine practice for 13 years. Together, we have 60 years of combined experience helping clients. We've helped tens of thousands achieve success in health and live longer, happier lives. In this show, we'll cover peer-reviewed and evidence-based integrative approaches to creating the health you've always wanted. We also share professional experience we see in the field every day. So if you're ready to feel, look, and live your best life, you're in the right place. Welcome to your Infinite Health Podcast. Hey, listener, it's me, Lene. Um, Trip is not... Uh, with me for uh, this episode because he had another engagement. What y'all may not know uh, that we do is we work with a lot of personal injury lawyers who have cases with their clients that have been injured, um, whether it's on the job or in an accident, because our regenerative medicine therapy is superior to, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but superior to what Many people may or may not receive at a chiropractic's office, and we have access to a really uh, progressive FDA-approved, I'm going to say it wrong because I am not the doctor, radiology report that is actually able to look at ligament damage, which is where the majority of damage is. It's not actually in the bone or what is captured on the MRI, so the MRI uh, isn't able to see ligament damage. And so we can, and so we actually, with our regenerative medicine therapies, can actually heal that that pain point. And so he is off doing, uh, working with a local personal injury lawyer to help their client. So it is just me today. I hope you don't mind. It's going to be a great interview, so you don't have to listen to me just yammer on about nonsense. And I'm excited to have this lady on. Her name is Jody Scott, and she is a dynamic force in the realm of health and wellness. Armed with a master's degree in health psychology, she specializes in the intriguing field of psychoneuroimmunology. I knew I was going to mess that up. It's a long word. Psychoneuroimmunology. Psychoneuroimmunology. A co-founding Sierra Sage Herbs with her certified herbalist sister, and graphic designer mother, Jody is the visionary behind renowned brands such as Green Goo, First Aid, Southern Butter, and Good Goo CBD. Her passion lies in pioneering plant-based products using innovative lipid extraction techniques that have earned global acclaim. Jody's journey unfolds further with the introduction of Melodial Global Health, where she explores emerging markets, including cannabis and psychedelics, pushing the boundaries of health and wellness. Beyond her impressive career, Jody gracefully balances her roles as a devoted spouse and a proud parent, staying connected to the natural world, community service, and personal growth. So I am really excited to have Jody on. All Welcome, right, Jody, Jody, thank you so much for joining us today. So excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. Excited to be visiting with you as well. Yeah. So I was kind of looking, uh, going through your bio and you are a busy, extraordinary lady. You got a lot going on. I don't sit still well. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Tell that to my coaches who try to get me to meditate. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean. I'm getting there. I am you getting know what? better at it. I have a tip. Just do it right before you go to sleep. That's about the only time I run a mantra in my mind. Um, like sometimes it's just thank you on the in breath and the out breath to go to sleep. Cause my mind is always working as I'm imagining yours is also. And so that. that's been, that's my meditation time might help you. Well, gratitude is a perfect meditation. So I love that you do that. Yeah. It's great. Cool. Well, um, tell me, about your plant-based nutrition. How did you get involved in that? Is that something that you always knew, like it always called to you or how did you arrive uh, being so passionate about that? 
you know, it's kind of a culmination of events. So we grew up in the military and my sister and I were cross country runners, um, swimmers. We spent a lot of time doing athletics. So naturally nutrition became an important part of how we engaged. Um, but living in the military bases, oftentimes there were not, we didn't have access to a lot of the trendy natural foods that were available. And, uh, you know, my mom was gracious enough to allow us to sometimes drive an hour together to go to health food stores. And so, you know, fast forward, we're in college, we're going to college in right outside of Austin, Texas, where the first Whole Foods was, and, and we were fortunate enough to be able to work in the natural food channel. And I think that really um, allowed us to become that much more educated on this notion of homeopathic, alternative, integrative medicine. And so my sister became a certified herbalist and a midwife, and then I was pre-med. And we oftentimes would share, uh, you know, different perspectives and, and have them kind of collide, like in a good way, mm -hmm. um, Eastern, Western medicine. And so, you know, fast forward, let's say maybe seven, eight years after college, and I'm in private practice, my sister's in private practice. Um, she met this wonderful woman in California who taught her the practice of making salves from herbs. And she called me and she was like, Jody, like you've got to see these beautiful salves that we're making. It's so amazing. So, you know, I, I would fly out to California. And so for, for our listener, yeah. define salves. Yeah, salves. Exactly. <laughs> so a salve is like a medicinal balm or like an ointment. And so it's an old world um, term, but we've really lost touch with that word. So we use things like lotions and okay. ointments now. Um, but typically a salve is like a, a medicinal ointment. Okay, cool. And so we started making them. And you know, at that time I had a daughter that was just born and we were looking at the first aid space and we're looking at like, do I put Neosporin on her? Do I put hydrocortisone on her? And all of a sudden the light bulb went off for us and we were like, oh my gosh, look at this first aid space. Like this is full of chemicals. Um, you know, the natural consumer was willing to abandon their natural ethos because they were told that these are the only products that could get the job done. So here, you know, this naturalist would have all the things natural in their house, but you open up their first aid kit and it's like, they just threw it all out the door <laughs> and they had, you know, that's where all the chemicals were. Mm. And then your conventional consumer was like, I really don't care about the ingredients. I just want something that works better because they were generally annoyed that they needed to go to the doctor because what was available on the OTC market um, over the counter was not um, getting the job done. And I thought there's no sustainability there. There needed to be a lifestyle brand, a little bit of fun, a little bit of sunshine. And I thought, what if we could make a plant-based solution that was superior in efficacy than anything else that was on the market, be plant-based, bring sustainability, could it be accomplished? And so that's when we said, let's try. And Green Goo was born. <laughs> Green Goo. I love that name. That's so fun. Makes me think of that. Um, slime they had on Nickelodeon is, is that what it looks like right <laughs> <laughs> well and that was kind of the inspiration okay. was that, and back to the word salve right nobody knew what a salve was nobody was using the word balms and we're like but an ointment sounds very um clinical very like chemical rid you know full of chemicals so we're sitting there looking at it at this at the at the salve and we're like well the salve is actually green in color you know, it represents the plants because what's unique about green goo is we don't um, purchase pre-made extracts, send them to our manufacturer and put things in a container like most companies. We actually bring the raw material. So all these plants come to our manufacturing facility where we take it through this really unique extraction process that's sustainable as well. And then we yield high amounts of the medicinal properties. And then these, these very unique oils go into these products. So it's unique to anything else that's on the market. And so the fact that it's green and that it's, there's plant, actual plants in it and it looks green, mm -hmm. that really inspired us to come up with green goo. And it's like a goo. We're like sitting there, putting our feet and we're like, well, it's kind of like a goo. So we thought we'd have fun with it. Yeah, that's awesome. So what exactly goes in 
in it? Like, is it like three ingredients, three plant ingredients? Um, and then is there a different um, salve for different needs? You got it. So, well, we actually have lots of plants that are in it. Um, when we look at the first aid space, we look at sort of what are the legacy products and what is it that the consumer's looking for? Um, and so whether it's a topical antiseptic, a hydrocortisone anti-itch or a poison ivy solution. And then we go to the drawing board and we say, okay, what herbs um, have been identified by the FDA as having active ingredients? What do we know with our you know, knowledge and herbalism? And then we start formulating. And um, like, for example, our Neosporin alternative has 13 herbs in it, um, along with essential oils. And then plant-based oils um, that are that are really um, what's the word? they're they're good for your skin. And I don't mean good for your skin just because like it's a healthy ingredient. Mm -hmm. I mean that the, your skin likes it. And so we look for ingredients that are good transporters and are um, have a good absorption rate for your semi-permeal membrane. So that you can bring these herbs in through your skin in a very um, efficient manner. So a lot of times like petroleum and paraben products, they might have some nutritive properties in it, but your skin doesn't like it. It actually leaves a lot of the medicinal properties on the surface of your skin because your skin can't absorb um, the good petroleum. that are in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is sort okay, of the common Baby oil is like one of the worst things you can actually put on your body in that wild it is and it's so fascinating in the first aid space that most of the products that are available are really for acute skin conditions mm. and in other words they say use this for three to five days and if symptoms persist you know stop using because it's dangerous or go see your physician right. and most people have chronic skin conditions and are looking for something for long-term use and improved efficacy and topical therapeutics are the fastest growing category. And we're seeing now exponential rates of people reporting, you know, chronic skin conditions. And, you know, we obviously have our diet and environment and, you know, contaminated water and so on, stress medications that are contributing to our largest organ, our skin telling right. us that, there's some things that aren't, aren't working so right. Yeah. I know, um, when my, my son in particular, um, had really bad eczema and had no idea what, you know, what was causing it or, or what, so the treatment was desinide, um, and really didn't like to use that. Um, and then the other treatment was like to change out the laundry detergent, right? Cause buy in the things that make your clothes smell good, but was, harming the body. So I had to go to, um, all free and clear. Um, so have you, have you thought about going into the detergent, um, and household <laughs> kind of cleaning lines? Cause I think there's a market there as well. Formulations are definitely my sister and I's favorite thing. So, um, we have some ideas for the future of, um, some different categories. We actually even have a sexual wellness brand called Southern Butter. And that was very much an extension of our, our customers coming to us and saying, can we use your products for intimate purposes? Mm. And we thought at first that was just kind of a bizarre couple phone calls. And then <laughs> friends and family started coming clean and they were like, we're actually wondering the same thing. And we, my sister and I are like, okay, well, let's go look at this category and get a better understanding of, of what the needs are. And we found very similar patterns um, in the sexual wellness space that we saw in the OTC space, mm. which was, again, the natural consumer was willing to abandon their natural ethos because they thought these were the only products that could get the job done. Right. Um, and the conventional consumer just wanted something that, that did the job. And so it's been really fun in this space to also bring some inclusivity, again, some personality and some mm -hmm. fun. Um, while also bringing the botanical profile that brings, you know, more nutrition and better for you um, and better for your skin ingredients. Nice. How did you come up with Southern Butter? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a, a, a friend who lives in, in uh, Louisiana okay. and he was cute. We were 
actually it's my cousin, but we were sitting and we were talking about this intimate line that we were making. And he goes, you know, we have a term down here in the South. And I said, what's that? He goes, when people mean one thing, but they say another, we call it, oh, you're just giving me some Southern butter. And so never heard that. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's really interesting because it's a butter and we're putting it down South Uh and we really mean something else that we're saying. And so it just kind of, it was fun and it it added to like the green goo personality. Yeah. I like that. That's really cool. I cannot believe I've never heard that term. I'm out out of the loop in my own (laughs) region here, apparently. So I want to come back to eczema for you real quick. Yeah, please. So um, this really is why Green Goo made it on the map, which is pretty exciting because none of our manufacturers that we went and met with were willing to do this really unique extraction process that we had. And so I went to the family and said, guys, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to scale this because we keep hearing no, no, no. And, And the reason these products work is because of the unique blend of herbs that had never been out before and the process by which they are extracted. So you can get these high quality concentrations without a lot of the other, you know, nonsense that could interfere with its efficacy. And we were at a trade show and um, this manufacturer just happened to come by and, and he grabbed some samples and we talked for a little bit and he was in a different line of business. And he called us a week later and he said, you know, my son has eczema and we have never found anything that works. And your product is the first product that works. He goes, I don't know how we're going to scale this. I don't know how we're going to do this, but we're going to figure it out. And now to this day, we have a dedicated line with, you know, dedicated equipment that we were able to build to scale this. Wow. And John Hopkins has been using our um, dry skin formula and their scleroderma and skin condition department now for almost a decade. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so it's a true testament to its efficacy. For sure. Well, I'm going to have to get my hands on some of that. I mean, he's outgrown it now, but it's good. So, yeah. yeah. My daughter has eczema and thankfully because of this product, she hasn't had any flare-ups except she's allergic to chlorine. And Mm -hmm. so chlorine will um, kind of stimulate an eczema flare-up. And so um, this product has been really great. And actually the poison ivy, if there's a rash, we have a poison ivy formula that's great for other rashes. So it works for, um, for her as well if she's not able to stay ahead of it in the summertime, if there's just extra chlorine in a pool. Oh, that's really nice. So how, so how, so how did you scale? I mean, how did he, how, how did, cause you got all those no's. So what, like, what was the process to actually scale the brand? How did you get into John Hopkins? (laughs) They found us. They actually called us and they were like, we keep having our patients come to us saying that they're using this thing called green goo. And they were like, can we get some extra samples so we can share them with our our oh, patients nice. because they're they're getting the results and so um it was fascinating to be able to get that call um but scaling you know i was cautious to go out and reach out to retailers until i knew we could scale because you know we couldn't be making it in our kitchen forever and um we really wanted this to be a legitimate um recognized company in the sense of we're competing in the OTC market. So we wanted to register them with the FDA. So we needed to have a facility that was FDA approved and GMP certified. And so that was just sort of a happy accident that that happened. And then from that point forward, um, we had a a first retailer, Natural Grocers, which is a natural um, food chain. And they reached out to us first and said they wanted to carry our products. And of course, we didn't know what UPCs were. We didn't know what EDI or line sheets. So um, thank you, Google. Would have been nice to have chat GBT then. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yes, we were able to kind of navigate. And um, from there, we just started reaching out to retailers and cold calling. I mean, there was a lot of cold calling. Um, you'll love this. My first retailer meeting um, was with APHIS, which is the Army Air Force Exchange. And of course, that was near and dear to me because we grew up in the military and right. we wanted to bring clean products as well as my dad had been deployed a lot and he was using our green goo first aid. Matter of fact, this is a fun story. I got to tell you this. We had someone call us and he was like, ma'am, I need to tell, to tell you that the green goo literally saved my life. And we oh. hear these stories, whether it's like sores or, you know, um, you know, 
let's say you're diabetic and you don't have sores that are healing well or what have you. And so I was preparing for that story. And he's like, um, you know, was in Afghanistan and um, my O-rings got jammed in my gun. And he goes, I carry green goo with me everywhere I go. And he goes, and I'm sitting there in a pickle going, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? And he goes, green goo. And he pulled his green goo tin out, got it in there. And he's like, and I got out. And he goes, and I just need to tell you, green goo literally saved my life. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, it's an off-label. So the, the, <laughs> yeah. So my dad had been taking it out on deployments. And so, you know, there was sort of this little um, sector of people that were really appreciating it. So that gave us an opportunity to have this meeting. And I go into this meeting and I've never presented to a retailer before. I have no idea what that is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we had a wonderful meeting. And at the end of it, she said, you know, we'd like to test the product. And, you know, again, she listed out a laundry list of things and acronyms that I had no idea what they were at the time. And I left and I was sharing the story with friends and family. And they go, you realize that's the second largest retailer in the world. And I'm like, it is. And I'm like, I'm so glad I didn't know that when I went into it because right. I would have been terrified. Yeah, you didn't it was know a lot of that. Know it served you actually. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of forging the path. I mean, the world was not ready for plant based then, and um, you know, sustainability wasn't as top of mind it is as it is now. I mean, fast forward, we have plant based water now. Um, but you know, we had to really forge the path and prove our credibility and prove the efficacy to get to this point in time mm -hmm. while also thankfully, you know, the consumer base has shifted and I mean, plant-based and natural is one of the fastest growing categories now or sectors, if you will. Oh, that's nice. You're leading, you were the pioneer. Well, you say pioneer, but actually we kind of you know, if you think about the ancient civilizations, uh, we're really the pioneers, but bringing it back into the forefront of modern contemporary uh, living is is awesome. And it sounds like you're leading, leading that way. Speaking of leading the way, I see here that you're a trailblazer in psychedelics. Tell me more about yeah, that. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> it was great when I'm sitting down with my dad, again, retired Air Force and saying, Oh, we're going to talk about psychedelics. <laughs> and uh, so we partnered um, with this uh, public company out of Australia. And one of the, the goals in doing that, um, they had a psychedelic clinical trial um, for treatment resistant PTSD for vets and um, police officers. And my degree originally was uh, a master's in health psychology, very passionate about psychoneuroimmunology, integrative medicine the biopsychosocial model and mind body medicine. So it's very much like a full mm -hmm. circle moment here in time because you start looking at some of the research in psychedelics and these are challenges that we have had in behavioral medicine that we have not been able to even come close to finding solutions for. And you know a lot of times you you feel like you are just barely inching these people along in life um, trying to find solutions for them that are incredibly uncomfortable. And psychedelic, the psychedelic renaissance, as they call it, is here and it's incredible. And the research is profound, um, you know, not just from uh, what we're seeing in treatment or uh, resistant PTSD, anxiety and depression, but alcoholism, um, insomnia, phantom limb, chronic pain, um, you know, end of life. And, and truly, um, the serotonin reuptake, the neuroplasticity. I mean, when I started in, in health psychology, neuroplasticity was, you know, pretty much, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, <laughs> you know, and you just better be prepared that neuroplasticity, meaning you're, you're just not able to, to change or right. acquire information as fast. And, the neurogenesis that we are seeing in, um, you know, psychedelics is pretty phenomenal. So I'm thrilled to be a part of uh, this clinical trial and getting to know this, um, you know, these different alternative modalities that may really improve everyone's health and wellness. I mean, I went to a, um, 
an event with Rick Doblin last week and, you know, with this wonderful intimate setting to hear more about the work he's doing with MDMA and psychedelics. And he said, you know, if we can fix mental health, this is it. That's, I mean, that's the problem, like us humans. <laughs> and this could be the key. And we're even seeing some of this in, in um, climate change. And there may be some added benefits to not only, let's say, you know, how we may use mushrooms from an environmental standpoint, alternative materials, um, but it's also mindset and, and bringing people to a sense of awareness to their environment and wanting to initiate those changes. Um, so it's an exciting area for research and, uh, and the results. And I think we're, we're very close. What, um, are there particular psychedelics that you're using in that clinical trial? So we specific, specifically, so we have a license, um, it's called Hallucinex Life Sciences. We have a license for over, I think seven to eight different substances. We are focusing on psilocybin. Okay. Um, so there's sort of a micro dose process uh -huh. and then a macro dose. Um, and we're seeing 80% remission rate. And what's so, so great too is, you know, uh, an individual may come in with, um, you know, PTSD, but there's a, a myriad of other, um, you know, challenges they're having. Maybe it's, um, obesity and insomnia, uh, agoraphobia, meaning there, you know, all these different fears, fear of leaving the house, anxiety, um, not having any kinds of the attention to be able to read a book or listen to music or go into social settings. And so obviously we're focusing on the PTSD, but we're seeing the results in other aspects of their lives, like no longer drinking alcohol, sleeping well, you know, furiously reading, having, um, you know, having activities that that get them excited about living again um so i'm i'm really hopeful that we're going to see a rescheduling and um you know we're seeing more states adopt this of course i'm in colorado so this is a very progressive I know. state you got access to all the goods um <laughs> i think they just um expanded medical the medical use of marijuana in Louisiana. Um, and we actually looked at being uh, a provider for that, but even though, but I was really hesitant because even though the state is like, you know, the state board is like, okay, well we can approve you. But by the way, the, um, the uh, federal was it DEA or the FDA or the federal mm -hmm. guys may take your license away. And I'm like, mm. Mm -mm. it's not a game I'm ready to play. And you bet because someone could just be having a bad day and decide that they're, today's the day that they want to you know, enforce right. the federal and DEA laws. And so it's, it's going to be incredibly important for this to be on the federal level because you've seen it with cannabis and the same is going to happen, you know, with psychedelics that especially healers and physicians and psychiatrists and psychologists and so forth, you know, they're going to need to feel that they are supported and safe to be able to administer right. these and offer the education and the integration that's going to be important um, for these to be successful. Because this is a relationship that you have with your provider. The psychedelics is a vehicle but the relationship you have with your provider is also incredibly important so that you have that integration and you get the results that you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, what I, I'm going to get off on a rant here, but I feel like when these things are overregulated, you're forcing behavior to go to black market and do things shady. And then the alley that isn't safe, isn't really in the best interest of the person seeking the benefit from that. Um, so yeah, totally a proponent of using these tools in a controlled, educated environment with a provider that, you know, is holding you accountable, giving you the best, uh, protocol for where you are to get you to where you want to go. And, and so I really hope we continue I mean, to move in that direction. 
And you're right. And to add to that, we need a trusted supply chain. These need to be produced in a GMP certified facility where you are accountable for the ingredients. Heaven forbid someone get, uh, you know, fentanyl or what have you off of the streets. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, you know, we have bigger issues. Here's, here's an interesting one that I just learned about called Ibogaine. And it Mm -hmm. is a plant from Africa that has been shown to resolve um, drug addiction. So people who have heroin addiction, you go through a 36 hour treatment. And when you come out of this Ibogaine experience, you no longer want to, you not only didn't have withdrawal symptoms, you no longer have the desire to return to that drug use. So Kentucky was the first state in the US to uh, decriminalize it. And they apparently took money that they had received from the opioid reimbursement and said, we are going to look at this alternative modality to help our people and help them with, you know, drug addiction. And you start looking at drug addiction and behavioral, you know, medicine there and homelessness. I mean, there could be a beautiful outcome there. Yeah. I hope they're tracking the data on that. Be curious to see. Especially, yeah. so it works on heroin. Do you know if it works on like meth? Because I know in the South, meth is a huge issue. I don't know. There's hmm. there's very little research that's been done. Um, there, There's a movie, and I'm forgive me, In the Night of Light, I'm going to mess it up, but it's a wonderful <laughs> group that, <laughs> and we'll come back and make sure that we can give our audience the correction on, okay. on that. <laughs> um, but it's it really gives you some of the the research and the story of, um, you know, the team that wanted to bring Ibogaine to the FDA and make this available and, um, you know, provide some of the insight and the research that has been done. Uh, it's it's pretty compelling. And it's also just a great movie. They're lovely humans yeah. who have Don't really dedicated their life. He was he was someone who was struggling with heroin addiction when he stumbled across this plant and, you know, was able to get the results that he did and said, we've got we've got to share this with the world. Um, oh, so awesome. it's, it's an interesting journey. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Well, um, what is one thing that you would like our audience to know? You know, I'm going to end the conversation the way we started the conversation. So I, um, I love that you end the day with gratitude. And uh, I think that that is a powerful tool. I mean, we're seeing the um, emotional and physical benefits. There's, there's science behind gratitude, lowering your cortisol and reducing your stress and journaling gratitude every night before you go to bed. And to your point, it's a great meditation. So um, in my sort of mind-body medicine relationship, (laughs) I encourage all of you to end the day with gratitude, maybe some green goo as well, some free to breathe underneath your feet (laughs) and under your nose so you can have a good night's sleep. Um, And uh, yeah, I hope that you can find a little bit extra joy in finding a little bit of gratitude at the end of your day. That's awesome. I love that. And where can people go to get green goo? Other, I mean, we talked about those retailers, but is it online? Like, how 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 can they find that? The best place to find green goo is at greengoo.com and also available on Amazon. And Southern Butter, uh, the intimate line, is also available at greengoo.com, but it also does have its own website at southernbutter.com as well. Awesome. Well, Jody, thank you so much for sharing your experience and your wisdom with us. Really appreciate your time. It was my pleasure. It was great to visit with you as well. Thank you so much. Well, listener, I hope you found this informational, educational, somewhat entertaining. And until next time. Thanks for subscribing to Your Infinite Health. I'm Dr. Tripp. And I'm Lynne. Until next time, feel it, look it, and live it. <laughs>